Why, hello, 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 Diamond Strong family. This is Kingdom Queen Talk, and I am Lady Tay, the Vision Queen. I am on the broadcast or Facebook Live with my Diamond Strong family. And I am on here checking in with you guys to see how your Victory March week has been going. Uh, we started our Victory March in March, marching for our victory. And I just wanted to get on here and answer any questions you may have. And also to keep encouraging you guys, you know, we're going to keep this going. I want to help you reach your goals and this is the best time, y'all. The first of the year is the best time. Uh, the first quarter, I look at it like if we're in a game. And this is the first quarter, y'all. The first quarter is the best time to strategize, to write down your visions, make it plain, and to go, 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 go. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to encourage you. I'm like your sister queen, as well as your coach and cheerleader. And, you know, you guys got support. I didn't have much support other than I, I did join a, a challenge, but they didn't know me personally. They didn't get to know me personally. Like, I'm trying to get to know you guys. That's why I have these weeklies. And I want to shout out to Michelle. And I want to shout out to uh nina as well as my girl michaela you guys have really been plugging in i know michaela had to take a little break but she's back and i just want to thank you guys for you know always showing up and to um bring your support and demaya too for being our cheerleader as well so i just wanted to shout out to you guys before we get started on um our weekly rally and it is a rally I, I look at it like a pep rally you remember in high school or middle school when we used to have those uh pep rallies well this is like your pep rally okay victory is yours victory is mine okay we're going to kill this uh obesity giant we're going to kill this self-doubt giant okay we're going to kill it okay and I'm here. We're going to slay it and cut his head off. And I'm here to help you catch the vision of the kingdom of God and catch the vision of the real true you, the victorious you, so that you can continue to hit those goals. And we're not just talking about weight loss or, you know, just your health goals. This goes for everything in your life. You're going to see as you grow is self-discipline you're gonna notice that this is going to spread to other areas in your life we have no idea how you know just one thing like we thinking oh i have a weight problem oh i have a health problem you have no idea how that little problem you think is a problem spread to other issues in your life you're going to see as you heal up here, that's going to solve a lot of other issues as well. If you have a problem with discipline or have a problem with, you know, just sticking to your word about different things. This, uh, this is what I'm trying to say. It's more than just the weight. There's other areas in our life that this affects. And you're going to notice as you grow, as you change, as you become the, the uh, person that God has created you to be, the king and queen, you're going to start being able not to just rule over this body, but you're going to be able to rule over other situations in your life. This is your life. And, you know, that's why I'm here. I'm not just here just to help you get the weight off. I'm here to help you become, become. Because I'm telling you, people be like, tell me what you did. What, you know, people put on, on my messages. Can I get a day 
of what you do, I'm telling you, it's not just about what I eat. It's not just about my strategy or, you know, my, my protocol or fasting or what I eat. It's how I changed here. It's how I became victorious here first. I had to become victorious. I had to get over that junk food addiction. First, the, the taste, the need to to taste the junk and, and to put something in my mouth. You know, sometimes I think I just would eat because I was bored. You know, those things, those little habits, you know, I had to change here first before I was able to be able to conquer those giants in my life like that. And these little habits, I'm telling you, it, it you'll be able to be able to conquer all these little habits that that you know probably annoy you and probably you notice will keep you from moving on to the next step of your life. You know, even if you had problems with you know trying to go back to school or you know, any of those things, you're going to start having those drives and motivations again to be able to seek and, and find uh, what you need and to be able to change here so that you can be able to go back to school or whatever that's been stopping you. See, like I was saying before in one, in, in one of the videos before, with you guys in the vision building series that this become a vision building series if you didn't notice by the by the way um uh, there are things that were said to us there were things that we dealt with that people said in our past or you know being bullied or you know just having self-esteem problems when we were younger there was things that we you know dealt with as, when we were younger that we brought into our adult life that makes us be limited on things that, you know, stop us. Like I told y'all before, I used to think I was dumb. So therefore that made me not push academically to be able to read and do all kinds of stuff. But guess what? I read all the time. I used to be in remedial classes when I was in elementary school. I was told that I, I couldn't read and comprehend. And, you know, my dad used to say stuff like, you know, college is not for everybody and stuff like that. And so in my young mind, I was thinking, well, since I'm one of those people that's just dumb and can't focus and can't do anything, that caused me to not try to push myself academically even though I got okay grades, I could have excelled even more or pushed myself even more. But because the programming, y'all, we've been programmed at a young age to accept mediocrity, to accept things in our life that we're not supposed to accept. And the enemy might have done that, but it Sometimes it take a wise woman or man. It might be a pastor. It might be a teacher. I had a few teachers in my life that told me I was smart, that showed me ways that I could learn. And, you know, God will send mentors in your life or destiny helpers that will try to help change the programming that you did have, you know. And I look at myself as one of those people to do that for you guys, okay? So it's not just about the weight, y'all. It's not just about that. This is about everything, everything in your life. You are vision building a new you, which is really the real you, okay? It's not the you, new you, it's the real you. It's not, it's finally getting off the layers like an onion. Taking off the layers of of all this junk that's been in our programming that caused us to think that it's okay to, you know, accept things that are, that are not ours to accept. It's not 
your portion to be sick. It's not your portion to be obese. Even though they, I mean, they tell us in America. I, I don't know if all of y'all are in America, but, you know, big is beautiful. If you grew up in the 90s or the 80s like I did, you would hear people, you know, even in Hollywood. Like, I love Monique and everything, but, you know, when she was going through her her stage, like when she was uh, playing on the Parkers and, you know, doing her thing and she was out in the spotlight her and a few other uh, black and beautiful women will make it think that it's okay for us to accept being big and beautiful, okay? Yes, we are supposed to love ourselves. That's true enough. But when were we supposed to just accept being big and accept being sick, you know? And then you see years later, People like her, they trying to get the weight off. They're trying to be healthy. Talking about, okay, let's be healthy. But we fail for that, y'all. We fail, and I'm one of them. You know, think, okay, well, I'm just going to accept being big and beautiful. I'm just going to accept that. When that was not my portion, I'm finally becoming who I am supposed to be. God didn't design me to be big and, and sick. And have PCOS and and uh, on my verge to be diabetic and all that. That's part of the curse. That's part of the curse, y'all. The generational curses. Okay. My family has obesity. It, almost everybody in my family is obese. So I'm supposed to just accept that? No. God created us to be walking our dominion okay a part of walking in our dominion is finding out the kingdom keys and, and the kingdom principles a part of that is we're not supposed to be sick we're not supposed to accept sickness as our portion okay and when i when i read this divine blueprint called the scriptures and started listening to wise men like uh miles monroe and uh, Cindy Trim and people like that that talk about the kingdom principles and help me learn what's in here that's, that's for me and how it's supposed to be my divine blueprint. When I learned that, y'all, started learning that, that changed how I think. That's why I'm, I call myself Kingdom Queen Talk because I had to change my mind by catching the vision of the kingdom of God here and that changed everything else you know I was talking to my um my great friend best friend for 20 man 26 years my best friend Avia she just moved back to Georgia and I'm so happy and you know she got a a, a good job a blessed job and a job that someone you would think wouldn't be able to get we gonna talk about her testimony on one of my shows i don't want to talk too much about it but you know we was talking about how i got the weight off and stuff and she was saying the way you did it it just seemed like nobody else could do it that way and you know what i had to tell i said it was because of the grace of god that i was able to fast and do the way I did, because like I said, I was a, a junk food addict before, you know, and you know, yes, I had to get angry about my situation. And that's what I keep trying to tell you guys. You have to get angry enough to say, hey, enough is enough. This got to change right now, right now. And then you have to write it down. But that I was telling her, I said, it was only by the grace of God that I could have did this. No way. No way I could have, you know. I had to give God the glory again. Because, you know, I couldn't have done that without God. To be able to fast like that for a year off and on fasting like that to get the weight off. No way. And I didn't have the support like, like you guys have this group setting here. I didn't have that before. I didn't have that. 
I see Michaela, you're here. Are you uh, talking to me? Because if you are, I'm, I'm not seeing anything other than you're here. I hate when I can't see y'all comments because I want to be able to answer any questions you might have. Are you talking to me? See if you can wave at me or something so I know that you're still here. Anyway, so, you know, I know we live in a stressful world. And I know that, you know, we have situations that come up. That's one reason why I tell you guys to make sure you write down your vision and make it plain. Remember last week we talked about vision. And I talked about how I wrote down the visions and, and stuff step by step. For you that's in my Diamond Strong community, y'all got first hand on how to do it step by step. And um, that vision on paper or journal, that becomes like your blueprint. You're building something. You are rebuilding you. You're rebuilding you. You're actually taking your pen and your journal and you are rebuilding yourself. Your vision building and your journal. The you that you are supposed to be. See, God is going to show you. As you writing the vision down, like Habakkuk 2.2 2 say, write down the vision and make it plain. You are writing down what God is giving you about you. Yes. You're writing it down. What you're going to have to do that because there's going to be some times and the devil made it just just for you to have those. OK, those scenarios, the, 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 the co-workers stressing you out, the boss getting on to you over little stupid stuff, all that stuff going on, the drama, all that stuff. That's just set up to make you give up. OK, when you have those going on in the background, which you will. The money problem is going to happen. I'm telling you, everything that I'm talking about with y'all, I went through it, okay? I didn't have no easy year when I was doing all that fasting. Matter of fact, everything I'm telling you, I went through it. The money problems, uh, you know, the sickness, husband getting sick, son having um, physical therapy and all that. I had to go through that, okay? But I had to keep pushing through. What kept me going? The word of God, his promises, and my vision on paper and my journal. That kept me going. I'm telling you. There's going to be a time, though it says, though it may tarry, there's a time those things going to happen for you. But during the time that is tarrying, you can't be terrified and stop. You can't, I'm telling you, you're going to have to keep going back and reading your vision. And you. it's going to keep you running during those tough times where everybody around you acting a fool. Because this going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Some of you might even, you know, because this is not just about weight. This, you go through, this, this is war. In case you didn't realize it, you're going to be going to war. That's why I say victory rally. You gonna need these victory rallies because you're gonna be going to war to fight for the you that you're supposed to be. It's gonna it's it's not gonna be easy. And I'm not speaking that on you. I'm just saying, anytime you have a vision, it's got to be tested. I get tested all the time because of my YouTube and and. Being the kingdom queen talk. You think I don't get tested? I get tested all the time. You're going to have to be able to strategize. And you're going to have to be able to go back and read your your blueprint. Your blueprint and, and, your, and your written blueprint that you wrote about you. Your vision. You're going to have to keep going back and reading it. To keep solidifying why you, kept, you have to keep going. I'm telling you, there's no joke here. This is a principle that I'm teaching you. And I'm telling you, it works. 
Anybody that built anything significant had a vision. All right? The Bible talk about all the people that had a vision. Habakkuk is not the only one that had a vision. Um, talks about uh, Nehemiah. He had a vision to help rebuild rebuild the uh, gate in the for the city of his his uh ancestors you know he had a vision esther had a vision of her people being uh not being killed when she did her three-day fast everybody that done something significant noah had a vision when he was building the ark we're going to talk about all these different people on my show that are in the scriptures and your divine blueprint they had visions. They had the vision. And they went through tough times to be able to fulfill those visions. If they had to go through it, those kings and queens and all of them, if they had to go through it to fulfill those visions, you're going to have to go through something to fulfill yours as well. Okay? And to help you with self-discipline. Because that's what this is about. To help you with self-discipline during the stressful times. You're going to have to be able to learn how to stay calm in those situations. First, you're not the situation. You're going to have to detach from the situation and look at it from a, another point of view. Okay, why is this happening right now? I need to think why the enemy sending this person to agitate me right now at this time while I'm fasting or while I'm trying to get this weight off. Why is this happening? Stop. Think. Pray. If you need to take deep breaths, stay calm. Is that donut worth all that that you went through? Is that bag of chips that you about to go eat, stress eat, because a lot of us, we stress eat when we going through a lot of tough, stressful times. I was one of those people, okay? Is that bag of chips or that bag of M&Ms, is that worth me stopping my goals for? I need to think about that. Is that bag of chips worth it? Is those M&M's worth it? Is that big thing of cookies or ice cream? Is that Does that taste better than the victory that I'm about to get when I'm able to go fit in them size 4 jeans and be able to go into the little boutique shops that I always watch my little friends in high school or my little friends at work that are, are petite? And able to shop at those boutiques. Is it worth me not being able to do that? You're going to have to think like that. Is it worth. Is that bag of chips. Worth me. Sabotaging myself. Is it worth me. Not tasting the victory. Of finally being able to. To fit in the jeans that I was able to fit in in high school. For you that used to be slim in high school. I didn't have that privilege. Of, but uh, is it worth it? You have to think about it. You have to think. These little habits that we have. We have to start thinking. Where did that come from? Did we have a mom that used to do that? Did we have a mom that used to. Okay, I know you feeling bad. Here you go. Here you go. Here's, have some candy. You know, I grew up in a household where we had candy dishes. And we had, you know, cookies and, and cookies in the cookie jar all the time. You know? If you grew up like that, you can't have a cookie jar in your house. Okay? Throw away the cookie jar. Don't even keep a cookie jar. I don't care if it's cute and it matches the decor of your house okay throw it out <laughs> jackie uh alexander wants to join me in the video really okay i'll bring you on let's see if i could 
bring you on. It says I can't join you. I'm sorry. We got to figure out how to do that, Jackie. <laughs> Stick with me. Stick with me. We just started this uh, platform, so we'll, we'll figure out how we can do that. If we have to start doing some Zoom meetings, we'll do that as well. Because I, I want to be able to talk with you guys. I don't know why it wouldn't let me bring you on. But, um, yes. It, you have to ask yourself, is this worth it? You think I don't ask myself when I'm at work and they eating donuts? Oh, they bring Dunkin' Donuts all the time at work. That's why I said the donut. They bring it all the time at work, you know? Is it worth me sabotaging myself? At this size, I could eat a donut. But is it worth it to me to eat that donut? What, what would that do for me? What the sweet taste of a donut? Is that better than the sweet taste of being able to finally look good in a pair of jeans? No. It's not worth it to me at this point, you know. Not saying I would never eat a donut. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that I'm self-righteous and I would never eat a slice of cake. If it's at a birthday party, I'll eat a slice of cake. Uh, I don't think I have a problem with, with my addiction like that anymore because I am now the kingdom queen talk, uh, vision queen at this point. I wrote down in the vision that she did not have an addiction so i don't think that will hurt me at this point but at this point i'm like why i don't crave it no more do i really want to start those cravings again i don't want to take that chance you know i you know i i like to think like that so i'm just giving you guys some strategies to just you know think before you just do it, you know. Just think about it. Just think about it. Stay calm and think about it. And really study you and find out where this came from. Like I said, me growing up in the 90s watching TV shows like Roseanne and all these people that had weight problems, they made it look like it was so easy to just say, oh, it doesn't matter that I'm big, you know, big is beautiful and all this. And then these people later on, you finding out they don't want to be big. They want to get the weight off. Monique is all, is getting her weight off, you know. Oprah always was on the diet, you know. These people, they getting all this money from these endorsements. Um, don't get me started, but I have to mention this. They getting all this money from these endorsements like Weight Watchers and all these different places to say, oh, you did our diet. So let's tell all of the people in the United States that, hey, join this product, join this program, and you can be big like Monique and, and get the weight off like she did or or whoever, or Oprah, whoever did the thing with, I think it was Oprah that did the thing with Weight Watchers, okay? So, they plant this in your mind early. Oh, it's okay to accept being big and beautiful. Oh, but now I want to get the weight off. Okay, so then they tell you they, they went to did this and went and did that. And a lot of times they ain't even did that, y'all. I exposed last year. That a lot of these people that we see in Hollywood getting the weight off and looking all good and stuff, they fast. But see, they ain't going to tell you that. You know why they not going to tell you that? Because they don't make any money. Industry and diet, the diet industry don't make any money if you fast. They don't make no money off of that. Why would they tell you that? Okay? No, they want you to take my gummies and take my pills and... Spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on this program and that program. And this is going to get the weight off and you're going to finally be happy. Okay? But God told us in here what to do. Jesus said when you fast. He don't say if you fast. Okay? So, do it God's way. Alright? Do it God's way. And you get, you're in a group where, you know... 
I'm here to support you guys. You getting one, uh, you could say one on one a lot of you guys because it's not too many of you come to these, okay? And I'm here to help you. I don't know if you guys talking or not. I don't like that. I wish I could see. I see that Jackie Alexander is watching and Michaela is watching. But for some reason, if y'all are commenting, I don't see it. And I wish I could. Because I, I think this is so wrong for me not to be able to see what y'all are saying. To after I finish, then I see y'all said something. I don't want to seem like I'm ignoring you because I'm not. I, I, I don't see if you said anything. Give me one moment. I don't... Give me one moment. I don't... Wait a minute. Okay, I'm looking at the video like, like I'm looking at like one of y'all. And I do see someone say, hello, queen. Okay, so I can see. For some reason, when I'm... When I'm looking at looking at it live, talking to y'all, I can't see it from the camera that I'm on, but I can see that y'all said something. So I do apologize if it seemed like I was ignoring you. I'm not. I couldn't see what you guys were saying, but when I look at it here, I can see it. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to keep two two phones at at all times so I can see. Anyway, it's okay that you late. It's okay. I'm just really talking. <laughs> but, you know, I'm telling you, nothing, no junk, nothing tastes better than victory. Nothing tastes better than victory. Slaying that giant called obesity and junk food addiction, nothing, not, e uh, not even a slice of the, of the best pizza in the world, nothing tastes better than victory. I'm not going to sit up here and tell y'all no lie like some people like these people in Hollywood would tell you. Uh, you could just eat this in moderation. You eat that in moderation. I'm not saying you can't have, a, like I said, I'm not saying you can't have a, an occasional slice of pizza if you conquered that addiction later on but right now this is wartime this is wartime for your victory you know so nothing's more sweeter than victory nothing and and i i had to refer back to my vision many many times during the tough times i was telling my friend i said y'all didn't know that when I was behind that camera last year um, doing Kingdom Queen Talk, you know, a third of my income just went out the window. Okay? The, the devil thought I was going to stop fasting and start eating junk food. And the old me, I promise you, the old me, I would have gave up. That would have been my excuse. Oh, really? Okay, well... That would have did it for me, okay? The car breaking down every other month. That would have did it for me. Yeah, that's what was happening. That's why I had to get a new car. A new car besides the one we had. Because the one that we had at the time kept breaking down every other month. Not only was the income diminished. Part of my income was diminished. A third of our income was diminished. But the other... Part of the income we still had, we had to keep putting it into getting the one car we had fixed all the time. Okay? Y'all didn't know that going on. I still kept doing Kingdom Queen Talk. I still kept fasting. I had to get, I still had 50 more pounds to get off. But see that, I'm telling you, the enemy, he kept pushing everything at me. Everything at me. I didn't have the support of my own family. My own mom and dad, I didn't have no support from them. They still think I'm crazy, okay? What? Why you? The same ones that told me that I was big when I was younger and needed to get the weight off are the same ones that's telling me now that I'm too small. So, 
Come on. That's what I'm saying. You got to change you. Victory you. Here. Because you're not going to have support from all these other people. They're not going to understand you. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about courage too. Because it's going to take courage for you to change as well. Because you're going you're gonna to find out who really in your life when you start changing. And it, it could be an ugly thing sometimes, you know. And I'm just being real with y'all. I don't talk like this with everybody. But I'm being real with y'all. Y'all are my family, okay. So, I'm telling you. During the tough times, you're going to have to get back in this journal and read why you're doing this. Because you're going to have, I learned that from Miles Monroe before I even started. So I was, I was kind of prepared. He said, anytime you have a vision, that vision is going to be tested. Because that vision is going to show you whether it was from God or not. If you don't stick with it, then it probably wasn't from God. Okay? And I tell you, I stuck with it. Even during that tough times. When, when everything was falling apart. Everything was falling apart. Y'all didn't know it. I was still getting behind that camera like nothing was happening. Because I was in it to kill that giant called obesity. I was going to slay that giant. And I was going to slay addiction. And I was going to slay all the things that was told to me at a young age that I can and cannot do. I was going after it one by one, one by one, including poverty. I'm going after all of them. I'm trying to help you guys do the same thing. Are you with me? Are you with me? Let me know if you're with me. Because this, I'm telling you, this go beyond. We vision building, y'all. Diamond strong. We vision building, okay? This go beyond the weight. Every aspect of your life is going to change. Starting here. Okay? All the programming, all the junk, all of it, that's going to go away. All right? Let me know. Are you with me? Because victory is ours, y'all. Victory is ours. We're going to continue this. We're going to talk about, uh, keep talking about uh, victory. Victory marching over the summer. As well as courage. You know, it take, I'm telling you, it takes courage to change. It takes it. And, and I'm going to talk about different books and stuff that I read and all kinds of stuff. So, y'all just keep coming to the weeklies. Keep showing up. Keep showing up. Did y'all have any questions so far about anything? Let me see if y'all say anything else. Any more questions? Or any questions? Oh, Michaela said, love that slay the giant. Yes. I had to slay that giant, baby. I had to slay that giant. I, I got a few more I'm slaying, okay? I'm, sl I'm, I'm going after everything that God has predestined me to go after, okay? When I found out who I am, that's what I'm telling y'all. You find out who you are, you start writing down who you are. Superman and woman, woman, all this stuff they got on TV, they ain't got nothing compared to kings and queens, okay? We're kings and queens. They writing about us, in case y'all didn't know that. They, the, the, they think that's all in their imagination to write about those characters. No, that is talking about kingdom, kingdom kings and kingdom queens. God put that in our spirit to walk in our dominion, okay? I'm going after everything. Everything the enemy stole from me, I'm going after it. I'm actually rebuilding me. Because the programming that we had as young kids, uh, some of us, I, I, I think most of us are black in here. A lot of this programming that we had, that is garbage. That's not us. That's not us. I talked about that last week. About the uh, boys in the hood and all this, all these uh these movies they had in the 90s and stuff. I don't know if they still have them because I don't even watch movies no more. But, you know, all that movies portraying the, the hood life and thug life and all that. That stuff, that rhetoric, that stuff was programming us to to think that that's all we supposed to be. That is not what we supposed to be. 
Yes, Michaela said. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Michaela said she been attacked mentally since she started, but she's pressing. Now, come on, why? Why are you being why are you being attacked? Because the vision. The vision have to be tested. The vision have to be tested. You're going to be tested. See, you're a diamond. You're diamond strong. You're a diamond. You're going to be tested. That's part of the cutting, y'all. That's part of the cutting. And Jackie says she with me. Okay. I'm glad you with me, Jackie. I'm glad you with me because I'm telling you, this go way beyond weight. That's why I was trying to tell people before, this is not just about weight. This is, I think that's one of the things that really driven me too, y'all. When I realized that it wasn't my body that was the problem, it was my mind. And I wrote that in my journal and I read that to y'all last week. When I realized that it was my mind that I had poverty, not just, see, we think poverty is money. Poverty is not just money. Poverty is a spirit that attacks every aspect of your life. When I realized that, I said, oh, no, I'm going to war, and I'm not just going to try to get this weight off. This is just a byproduct of what I'm fighting for. Yes, I, I got the weight off. Yes, next, though. What's, what's next that I need to get? I ain't stopping here because he stole so much. He stole my, you could say he stole my identity. He stole our identity. Our identity was stolen when these people and uh, these people and this program and this TV and this, all this stuff and telling us it's okay to eat junk food, all this modified, crystallized, uh, sugarized stuff that we eating, all this stuff, it it they set it up to take us from our destiny, y'all. And these people, they know what they doing. That's why I'm exposing this stuff on Kingdom Queen Talk YouTube. I'm going to keep exposing it. And like Michaela said, she been attacked. Thank you. That's what that's what I'm talking about. I've been attacked too. You think that's going to stop me? That ain't stopping me. Because I know what I'm talking about. The God, God gave me the assignment. I know what's going on. And I'm not going to stop. It, and the enemy, he was okay. Like I told y'all before. He was okay when I did it for myself, okay? Yeah, she get the way of it, you know, big deal. But when I cut that camera on and I start telling you guys about it and start telling you guys that you can be free, that that really brought on the attacks. And see, Michaela, I know you being attacked because you do uh, Facebook Lives too. And you helping other people. So I'm telling you, that's part of it. That's part of it. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to continue these uh, rallies because you guys got the, y'all got the victory. That marching is not just about the weight. That marching is changing something here. Remember, um, Martin Luther Kingdom, how did it get strong like that? Talking about we shall overcome. That's already in our spirit to be just like that. You know, Joshua it, it, he fought the va the battle at, at Jericho. They marched around Jericho seven times. You remember that, Michaela? Before they before they took over Jericho, it's in us to march for victory. That's in us. You think Dr. Martin Luther King just got that out of nowhere? God was speaking in his spirit because he was a visionary. He was speaking to his spirit. To tell him to do those marches, okay? Just like Joshua did. Just like Joshua, Joshua did with the Israelites. It's in us. I'm a visionary too. Just like Dr. Martin Luther King. Just like all of them. I'm a visionary too. Before I even knew that I was going to get the weight off of any of that stuff. God told me in 2020 that I'm a visionary missionary on the field. To help God's people arise and elevate. I didn't know what that meant exactly. Uh, I knew I was supposed to be a motivational speaker or something like that. 
but I had no idea it was going to be me with the fire of God on in my belly on here talking to you guys about stuff like this. I had no idea, but see, God knew that, and he put that in my spirit when I was shy and didn't want to get behind the camera and all that and was ashamed of how I looked and all that. He changed all that, and that's why I was telling my um, friend yesterday that moved back here. I said, God will use the foolish to conform the wise because all the people in my life that saw me like that, that saw me stuck and and people pleasing and, and just smiling and all that, never really confronted people and let people treat me any kind of way and all that and saw the big me and, the you know, when they saw me like that and then they see me like this here, he's taking the foolish. They thought I was foolish. And conforming the wise now. Now they see me like, what in the world going on? What? God will do that. And any of any people in your life that doubted you, that thought that think you foolish or think you less than anything, he gonna use your story to conform them. Be like, yeah, if I could change this person right here like that, I could do that. Like he did Paul. When Paul used to be Saul and he was killing the Christians. And then all of a sudden he the one, actually the one doing all the teaching about the principles and the kingdom principles and changing things around. All the people that was the Pharisees and stuff was looking like, what in the world? How he changed like that? See, God will change you like that. God will change you like that. He changed your crown, your kingdom, kingdom mindset, y'all. I'm telling you. That's what he going to do with you. That's what he, I, I'm not special. He going to do that with all of us, you know. Michaela said, yes, rebuilding the temple. Yes, this is your temple. See, we was thinking that, you know, God gave me the revelation that, that our bodies, we thought the bodies, the, body, the whole body was the temple. No, your mind is your temple. This here. Your body just follows the mind. We give too much. We give too much uh, power to these bodies. No, it's the mind. The mind controls the body. But see, we letting the body control the mind when we let these, you know, when we have these addictions and we just, you know, succumb to it and just be like, oh well, I just can't, I just can't do it because you know, uh, uh, uh. I have to have my, I have to have my Coke and my, my bag of chips and all that. Y'all, I've been there, done that. I'm telling you, I'm preaching to me, okay? Let me tell you, it's the mind. The temple of the Holy Spirit is here. You get the temple of the Holy Spirit together, the body will follow. The body will follow. And guess what? I didn't even learn that part. I ain't learned that part from the church. I had to get out of the regular church building where the where the pastors, all of them obese and sick. I had to get out of the regular church building and start t learning God's divine blueprint on my own with the Holy Spirit, consecrated for two years, reading the scriptures, Listening to the word of God, listening, reading, listening, reading, watching Miles Monroe, reading his books. I had to separate from the rhetoric of the sick people that's in the regular churches to finally get this together. It's funny how you do that. And then and then on top of that, it was people God had me gleaning from that's not even in the church. Like um like I was talking about my um journal. Bob Proctor, he ain't in the church. Uh Wayne Dyer, he not in the church. These people you would think are new age. But see, even the new agers, they knew they were taking our principles out of the Bible and think and grow rich. All them books. Those are principles they took out of the Bible. And God was showing me. He was showing me. You see what they doing? You see how they took this and wrote this book? Look where that at in my own scriptures. This this already in here. 
That's what God, God was showing me like that. He was showing me like that. And I'm like, what? What? Yeah. So, you know, that's why he would take the foolish to conform the wise. That's an example of that. These people think they so wise, go to church every day, not reading their Bibles, just sitting up there listening to the pastor. Well, we need to be studying this for ourselves. Okay? And it takes wise people, wise people to show you. That's why I'm so glad I found Miles Monroe's teachings and, and Cindy Trim. And, you know, that's what I'm, I'm glad because, you know, they wise. They wise when it comes to the kingdom principles. And I started seeing this stuff and I'm like, what? This is how we supposed to be? We supposed to, we not supposed to be a victim of our circumstances. We actually have the power to speak over our situations. He said, God said he would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask or think. What? Ephesians 3.20? That's in there? Why I didn't hear about this before? Okay? So this is what I'm talking about. Y'all, this is what I'm talking about. I know I'm excited. I, I get excited when I talk about God and I talk about how he showed me these things and how I'm helping you guys victory victory is yours baby this victory march y'all keep sticking with that while you walking you thinking about how you gonna overcome like uh dr martin luther kingdom you say we shall overcome you already overcome baby you are already overcome and you're gonna see month by month month by month all these all these shackles just dropping off of you okay i don't care what they send you I don't care if your boss tell you, uh, we go cut your house. That happened to us too, y'all. I'm telling you, everything I'm telling you, that happened to my husband. We had, to, we had to deal with that as well. I'm telling you, no matter what's going on. I'm sitting here trying to build a ministry at the same time and all that stuff going on in the background. Push through it. Push through it. Because, see, the enemy want to distract you. He's going to keep trying to distract you with all this stuff going on in the background. But you're going to have to keep overcoming. Remember, they used to spit on Martin Luther King. They used to seek dogs on them. No people still kept marching. Okay? If they could still keep marching and they was uh, seeking dogs on them and them nasty people spitting on them while they was marching and, and hitting them with billy clubs and all that stuff. If they could do that, and that was your moms and dads and aunties and uncles that went through that, it's your turn now, baby. It's your turn now. This is, yes, it's more spiritual. Yes, you might not see the enemy as he come, but you're going to start seeing the enemy as he come because as you change this mind, you're going to start seeing it. You're going to start feeling it before it comes. Yeah, I already knew some of those attacks was coming. That's why I was able to gear up. Okay? I'm telling you, if they can overcome it, you can overcome this. You shall and you will overcome. Any questions? Y'all said anything else? Oh, well, thank you. I see Nina says she watched my YouTube. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Michaela said, you speak it. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit. I I'm telling you, I got that zeal in me tonight. That's the Holy Spirit. I'm not in the throne room. Now. I'm fixing to get in the throne room, though. But I'm telling you, you will overcome. I want this so badly for you guys. I do. That's why I'm, That's why I keep showing up. I was taking me a nap early. I said, oh, no, I got to get up. I feel refreshed, though. I said, no, I got to get up. I got to get up and, and get on this rally so I could uh, help my uh, help my sisters, my sisters and kings. I, I know I got some kings coming here, too. Kings and queens. I had to help my kings and queens overcome. Y'all have to remember. See, I'm telling you. 
you're going to start remembering who you are. You think you, I'm telling you, it's like an amnesia. When we come in this world and all this garbage is programming us, you forget. But when you was a little girl, you knew you was a princess. That's why they call you a princess when you was a little girl. You knew you was already royalty. We forgot who we were. I'm reminding you who you are. It comes with remembrance. You are remembering who you are. Okay? You are born to dominate. You are born to be a king and queen and to rule in your domain. And you're going to be ruling. All right? But you got to go through the cutting process. I'm telling you. It's not easy. My husband be like, what in the world? I'm like, baby, you already know what's going on. You know what's going on. He's like, yeah. Yep. And we just keep pushing through. We're going to keep pushing through. And I have to keep pushing through for you guys. Okay? I'm a leader. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm here for you. I'm a leader. So I, I know I have to keep pushing through. God said I was a visionary missionary on the field to help his people arise and elevate. I had no idea when he told me that back in 2020, well, the end of 2019, because it was before the pandemic when I had got that. I got, I, I was in a, I was in a, um, I was in a fast and I was um, dreaming. And as I was waking up, I was singing like a little rap. I'm a visionary missionary on the field to help God's people rise and elevate. I'm like, where did it come from? It came in my spirit as I was waking up. Like around 4 o'clock in the morning. He was talking to my spirit, y'all. Y'all better start keeping your journal next to your bed. Because sometimes he will talk to you in your spirit. Like time you wake up. Time you wake up, you'll hear something. That's him. That's him. Write it down. Okay? That's him. Write it down. Write it down. Okay? Especially now that you're doing this, all right? He really going to be talking to you now. So I heard that, and it was like a rap. I was rapping it as I was waking up, and I'm like, where did, it, where did it come from? I wrote it down, and he kept telling me that. But there was a waiting period. Though you write down the vision, there will be a time that you will tarry, okay? But you have to wait for that vision, all right? He told me back then. Okay, so I'm telling you, I I know what's going on. That's why I had to get on here tonight and tell y'all, keep pushing, keep pushing through it. Michaela said, what are you, what are your go-to scriptures to mind renewal? Okay, um, well... I like to read the stories of kings and queens before us. And I love the book of Esther. See, God will show you through these different people, these different kings and queens in the scriptures. Those stories are not in there just to be like, oh, Bible stories. No, these are stories about you, about things you will overcome. Those things, those situations that they went through, they for you. And he talked to me through Esther during my um, fasting while I was um, going through the first 180 days that I've been telling you guys about, that I'm making a um, coaching program about, 180 degree change in 180 days with vision building. He had me studying Esther. He's using me like he used Esther, especially the first six months of my ministry. I was coming to you guys as Esther for such a time as this, okay? So he will talk to you through the Bible scriptures about the, their stories, okay? Now he's using me more like Deborah, okay? He told me back when I started doing that walk back in May, study Deborah. Deborah was the prophetess, the woman prophetess, but she was a righteous ruler. They didn't call them 
queens and kings back when she was in office. She was a judge. She was a righteous ruler. Start, God started talking to me through the scriptures about Deborah, how she was a prophetess, how she had insight. See, I get insight. I don't call myself a prophetess, but I get insight, okay? She had insight, a relationship with God. She get insight about different things and very intuitive about things. And um, she was a righteous, strong ruler. So that's why I started calling myself Lady Warrior over the summer. He started showing me that, yes, I'm still in the role of Esther sitting on the throne, but now I'm a righteous ruler warrior. So now that's why I'm teaching you guys how to fight. You got to fight this, kill this obesity giant and, and poverty and all of them because they all friends, y'all. The obesity I'm going to show y'all in Proverbs. That's why he been attacking me from getting from Proverbs. Obesity, gluttony, drunkenness, all this stuff. That's the same thing. It's all poverty. See, a drunkard and a glutton, they, they, they eat so much and they drink so much where they can't think straight to be able to go and to have the energy to go and do what they need to do to create wealth, okay? So, and, and I saw that in my own life. All the junk food that I was eating, spending all that money at Chipotle and all these different places. You know how much money I spent at them places that I could have been using to uh, pay off things in my life? See, I'm doing them now. I am built my credit now. But, you know, all these things that I was doing with my money just not being a good steward on my money. It was because I had a gluttony problem, okay? So all of that poverty, all of that, they friends. They friends. Poverty love gluttons. Love drunkards. Love sex addicts. Love them. Love them. Why? Because you can't use your mind. Because your mind is sleep. Your mind is sleep. That's why I talk about this sugar addiction so bad, y'all. Because the sugar puts your brain asleep. Where you have no sound judgment. You just eating. No sound judgment. 400 pounds, you know you shouldn't eat it. But your judgment not telling you to stop. Why? Because you're addicted. I know. I was almost 300 pounds. I could talk about this. I could talk about this. I know. Uh, eight times addictive is cocaine. That's what sugar is. You think they didn't know that when they put all that in, it, in everything you buy? You think they didn't know that? And see, now y'all understand why the devil's so mad. Because look how boldly I talk about this. And I'm going to keep talking about this. And I'm going to expose more articles that I'm found. And more books that I've been reading. You know? That's why he wanted me to think I was too dumb to read. Because now I'm reading. I'm reading all kind of stuff. Okay? <laughs> if you tell them young that they can't do it, then we're going to stop them while they're young. That was, that was his plan for me. And that was his plan for you. You think that's it's a coincidence you here? God got a plan for you. That's why you here. That's why this is what I'm talking about. It's so attractive where you had to come and hear what I got to say. Because God is telling you, listen to that woman. She's telling you. I'm telling you, all of y'all, y'all got a calling on you. Y'all got a calling on you. Alexander, uh, Jackie Alexander said, yes. <laughs> yep, yep, we are uh, his royal priesthood. You sure right. Deborah arrives. Yes. Uh, Deborah. She wasn't no joke, y'all. I'm telling y'all. Deborah wasn't no joke. She told, I forget his name. I, I know it next time. She told him when he was like, I'm not going to go unless you with me. Okay. She said, okay, but if I come with you, if I come with you to war, they it's going to be in the history that a woman, that it was a woman 
they overcome. You want that? That was the the war was saying. You sure you want me to come? You know why that lady could only say that? Because she knew she had God on her side. And she knew that if she go, oh, the victory was theirs. And sure enough, it was. And sure enough, she's in the scriptures as a judge. Not that man. See, we don't even know, I don't even know a name. You know why I probably don't even know his name? Because he wasn't even that important no more. Because he allowed himself to be in fear so much that he he said he wanted Deborah to go with him when God told him to go. Deborah said, okay, if I'm going, it's going to be me written down in, in history as the one. And she was. Deborah wasn't no joke, y'all. And, and God was telling me, it's time for you to walk in Deborah now, okay? And that's who I am for the rest of my life. I'm Esther and Deborah and I'm King David and I'm some of King Solomon too and Nehemiah. Uh, I'm telling you, these scriptures are about you, about your walk, about what you're going to have to overcome. Even Saul's story, even Saul's story. Some of us, uh, we, we didn't kill Christians, but in the world we talked bad about them, didn't we? Okay, we cut them down with our mouths, all right? But then here you are preaching the gospel, all right? Look at you. All of a sudden, you, she's saved now. You you probably heard it, them, you that was out in the world before. She's saved now. I know she ain't saved what she used to do, what she used to say, how she used to drink it, how she used to cuss. She's called herself saved now. Just like Paul. You're going to go through that persecution from people that you thought loved you. You're going to go through that now when you change. And they're going to be trying to judge you about how you used to be. See, Paul, he heard that to the day he died about how he used to be. But see, you can't let that stop you. Okay? You can't let that stop you. Like they say, how I used to be. Some of them still can't get over the fact that I'm not that big big pushover anymore that i'm no longer her i'm no longer that woman okay she was a beautiful woman y'all but i said i had to say goodbye to her okay i can't walk in the walk and do god's purpose in those old shoes okay in that old wine skin i can't walk in my purpose being that old shy person that everybody just overlooked. I couldn't be that person no more. And it's funny how the ones that they overlook all, all these years, God would bring them out later to shine. He always do that. It's all in the scriptures of how he did that. You know? So don't be shocked. Don't be shocked if you was the one that was already, always looked over. I was the baby. The baby one that nobody looked at would do anything. You know? He always used people like that. So don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. Stay humble, but don't be shocked. Say, Lord, use me. Surrender. Lord, use me. And he will. He will. Did y'all say anything else? I have to keep looking down. I hate that, man. I hate that I have to keep looking down. Michaela said, you bless my night. I'm always overlooked. Yes. You going from being overlooked, baby, to overbooked. Okay? I'm speaking that over you. You going from overlooked to overbooked. Whatever God is calling you to do, you're going to be overbooked. If it's going and speaking like I'm speaking, and, you know, I already know. That's why I'm preparing myself now, because I already know. I'm looking at suitcases and stuff <laughs> when I'm at work, because I already know I'm going to be traveling. He showed me. I'm going to be traveling and, and speaking, okay? You're going to be going from overlooked to overbooked. You watch what I tell you. Keep marching for victory. Keep marching for victory. All summer long, 
I ain't talking about just wait. I'm telling you, I'm talking about everything. Go after everything the devil stole. Go after everything that old nasty dra uh, dragon stole. Slay that dragon. Slay him. Because he, 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 he going to keep trying to attack you. He going to keep trying to attack you through people. And, and another thing you have to realize too. Some of the things that you might think is an attack. Could be that the Lord allow it so you can see this about you and what you need to to improve on. Like, I, I noticed too, like, I had to get over people, like, now that I'm working in the public and not just behind the camera anymore, I had to learn to be able to deal with difficult people, Okay. Sometimes God allow that difficult person to come to you so that you can learn how to deal with them. Okay? So look at it as lessons too. All right? That difficult boss that you have, God allow that difficult boss sometimes to push your button so you can learn how to deal with that. Because in your walk, you're going to have to learn how to deal with people. You're going to have to learn how to deal with different people. Like... There's a couple of customers that everybody else say is difficult. But for some reason, they come to me and they respect me and love me. You know why? Because it's the light of Christ that's in me. And they see that I have I walk in authority. But the old me, they wouldn't have saw that. They wouldn't have saw that. They probably would have treated me like they treat everybody else. They come to me because they know I don't put up with that. And I even had a supervisor say that. She said, I want you to go over there. That lady's being difficult. And I went over there and helped one of the other cashiers bag for somebody that was being difficult. That lady changed like night and day when I went over there. And they were shocked. That person was giving that, that cashier all kind of grief. I went over there and started bagging the stuff up and, you know, talking to the lady. Hey, how you doing? And talking to her son and everything. That lady changed like night and day. It's like the devil just jumped out of that lady why because i walk in my authority okay but the old me wouldn't have been able to do that and see your co-workers as you grow and as you get stronger they gonna notice that authority in you too because i don't put up with that i ain't putting up with the devils i ain't put you coming in my line or you coming over there near me oh you it's gonna flee that that devil gonna flee so i'm not putting up with it i'm walking my authority even animals will notice that about you, okay? Even dogs will notice that about you. I'm telling you, when you change this, the body follows. Everything follows. Everything follows, okay? You're going to see. You're going to go from overlooked to overbooked. You're going to see. You're going to see, my little sister. Yep. She said, I receive it. You better receive it, girl. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Anybody else got anything to say or any questions or any testimonies? I like testimonies too. Anything else? It's just you and me, uh, Jackie and uh, Michaela tonight. That's okay. That's okay. The other ladies, they're going to see our video tonight. And hopefully they come next week and give us a, a testimony too. Y'all got anything else? This is powerful. See, where two or more gathered, let the Lord word, word of the Lord be established. You see that? Y'all got me all fired up. All right. Well, if there's not anything else, I'm going to go ahead and cut the meeting tonight. Remember, three times a week, at least. You can do more than that now if you can. But at least three times a week. I said three times a week because it's this the third month of the year. So y'all already know April going to be four times, okay? Three times a week for 30 minutes a day at least do your victory walk, okay? You ain't gotta, it could just be a brisk walk. It could be a glory to God walk. 
Glory to God while he giving you ideas. Write them down. He going to be giving you ideas. He going to be talking to you as you walk. You going to be meditating in your mind. It, walk can give you a meditation type of uh, feeling. Take advantage of that. That's what we're supposed to do. Remember the scripture said that Adam used to walk in the uh, walk in the um, garden with God. That's talking about us, y'all. <laughs> with descendants of Adam, okay? I'm telling you, this whole scriptures is your blueprint. Whatever they did in the scriptures, you gonna go through that. You gonna see that in you. He walked in the cool other other evening with God before the fall. Y'all remember that? He walked with God. Okay? A lot of people in the scriptures walk with God. You walking with God. Think about that when you're doing your victory walk. Now, this came straight from the Holy Spirit because I wasn't even planning on saying that. Okay? All right? Anyway, I love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and let this go tonight. We're going to do this again next week. I'm going to finally get some videos out there. I'm going to do a Kingdom Queen talk as well as a Your Body is Your Palace because I need to get back on this uh, sugar stuff. I got to talk about it, y'all. I got to talk about it. All right? And remember, if you can think it, victory, you can see it. And if you can see it, you can be it, baby. You can be it. Everything God has created you to be. Okay, you got the victory over your enemy. I got victory over my enemy. That's an old song, okay? <laughs> All right, you got victory over your enemies, okay? And the world can't do you no harm. That's a song from the 80s, okay? Y'all can look that up. Victory over your enemy. It's on YouTube. It's an old song. You might want to play that old grandma song, okay? That's what helped me doing my fasting, all right? And also, it takes only one vision and one decision to change your whole destiny, y'all. That one vision for me was to become everything that God has created me to become. And that's the vision, queen, okay? That was my vision. That's my vision. All it takes is one vision for you. Your vision to become the king and queen that God predestined you to become. That's your vision, okay? All right. Write it down. You welcome. I see you said you glad you came. I'm glad you came too. Yes. You welcome. You welcome. I might put this one on. Uh, I might put this one on. I think I will put this on YouTube. I think somebody need to hear it. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, guys, I will be back next week and be prepared, okay? 9, 9.30, whatever time I can get on, I try, okay? See y'all next week. I love y'all so much. Talk to y'all later. Good night.